sometimes well, I'll just say what the heck and um, try something completely different and new. And this is actually uh, really a pattern that I just really enjoyed watching uh, David McPhail tie. I was like, I want to give that a shot. Um, Davy's over in Scotland, I believe, but I wanted to give it a shot, um, give, give it a try. Um, I tie mostly, as I think I've said it so many times before, kind of my place of Zen. This is how and where I relax is in front of my vice. And so it doesn't always matter if I'm going to be fishing with the flies that I'm tying or not. Sometimes I just like the challenge and the look of a certain fly. Um, and this is going to be a, an adult midge pattern. Um, we're going to, we've got a 14 scud hook in the vise. I'm using a chartreuse thread. Um, I just tied on a piece of um, small size silver wire. Um, now that I've got that wire in place, I'm just going to pull it backwards carefully with my hand and that will keep me from having to um, cut that material off it's right at right the length that I want it to I'm not going to build up much of a taper on this but there might be a, a little bit I've also got my hook angled down in the vise uh, you can probably see that on the video just a little bit um, I will reposition it as I move up more clo closer to the front of this particular pattern that's looking okay so far. We're going to come back down. I'm going to leave a little bit of a tag. So for our body here, I'm going to use some bleached pheasant tail. Um, this is good looking stuff. And I'm tying it in really close by the butt ends. And this is another one of those helpful hints um, if you're just learning to tie flies. And I always forget about this and don't do this, but um, I've got it tied in by the butts, but then I'm just gonna draw the fibers backwards till I get them to about where the length of my body is going to be. And that keeps me from having to fight um, really hard at all to get this tied in by the tips. I'm going to secure those down pretty nice and tight here. And I really don't want to crowd the eye too much on this one. Uh, we got a lot of work to do up front. For me, right now, I just want my thread to be dangling pretty close to where the point of the hook is. Uh, maybe a little bit in front of that. I'm going to go ahead and grab those um, dyed or those bleached pheasant tails fibers. We're going to take those and we're going to wrap them up the body. And like I said, I, I left a little bit of that chartreuse thread kind of showing there at the bottom end. So that's going to give us a nice little bright spot at the very bottom of the fly. I'm just going to wrap these carefully up the abdomen area of this fly. Looking pretty close. So I'm going to just take this last turn here, bring my thread back around, making sure that's still tight. Take a couple of wraps over the top of that piece of pheasant tail there, and then I'll take another wrap here on this side of the pheasant tail. That'll start secure that nicely um, in place for us. Then we go ahead and come in with my scissors and we'll trim off the excess material right there. From there, I'm going to counter rib the silver wire, um, which means I'm going to wrap it the opposite direction that I wrapped the pheasant tail. Um, and what that's going to do is it's going to help secure that because this is going to be lying across um, those fibers, which will make that pheasant tail a little bit more durable. Also gives us a nice um, rib on the body as well. Now that I've got all of that pretty much in place, I'll just take a couple of wraps over it. I'm going to use my good old-fashioned helicopter friction method and have that break off. We'll reposition our hook now because we're going to start moving towards the front of the fly. So I'm going to go ahead and tilt that up and you can see that now the head is a lot more parallel. 
Now that I've got the hook repositioned here in my vise, I'm going to tie in a piece of large opal pearlescent kind of tinsel here. I'm going to use that for kind of a wing case over the abdomen. I'm going to draw that back a little bit to save myself a little bit of bulk. Uh, most importantly, I want this to be ensure that this is going right over the top of the hook shank here. So if I need to, I'll pull it a little bit. Um, but you should have it kind of like that, kind of sitting right there on the top. So on this pattern, we're going to add a couple of wings. Um, and basically what I'm using is, um, I'm using this from a hen hackle, from a whiting hen hackle here. I'm using these tiny little feathers that are down here at the bottom. So they're literally really tiny. Um, I've kind of stripped the um, fibers off the bottom of, of the feather here. And I'm going to want this to go just beyond the back end of the hook. I'm going to tie one on my side of the hook. Let's turn our thread counterclockwise so we get it to wrap backwards on us a little bit better. I'm going to grab my other little one. It's where my fingers are not what they used to be. this fellow in on the camera lens side. Take a look at length there. And once I've got kind of the length that I want, I'm going to go ahead and take a couple of wraps up towards the front. I want to get off of those tail fibers or, or the, the butt ends here because I don't want them to spin around on me. I want them to stay in place. So let's get ourselves back onto the hook shank. Just like that. And I'm just going to take a few wraps up because um, we are going to need to build up a little bit of a thorax. I'm just going to take it to about right there, but hopefully you can see looking down on it now, we've got um, these two nice little um, tiny wings coming out on either side of this midge. From here, we're going to tie in a tiny little piece of um, kind of a fluorescent orange floss. We're just going to give this a little hint of color back where we're going to have the thorax begin. Um, this thing starts looking like a sherbet popsicle, um, which is why I wanted to tie it. Um, I like sherbet, but I just like the way this fly looks. So I'm really just trying to get at that um, little bit of an orange spot there. That's all I'm trying to accomplish here. So I'm not going to take a lot of wraps. Um, a lot of that's going to be covered up when we put on our dubbing. So I'll just take a couple of wraps to secure that in place. We got that there now. I'll just go ahead and reach in and grab my scissors and cut this off pretty close. So I'm ready to dub. I'm just going to grab me some awesome possum. Um, I'm using a golden olive, I think. Um, just kind of helps set this fly off a little bit. I'm just kind of working it between my fingers a little bit, just preparing it for a, a good finger dubbing. Like the awesome possum, it's a little bit buggy, um, kind of what you'd want for hairs here. So it'll have a, a few guard hairs that will stick out. I'll dub that on pretty tight. I'm going to move right back into that orange spot there. And I'm going to continue to work my way up towards the front of the hook. Coming right back again a little bit here. And I want to build that up just a little bit more. So I'm going to come back to my dispenser and grab myself just a little bit more of this stubbing. Get my fingers wetted and let's go to town. Alrighty.
Okay, I am I'm good with that. I'm gonna go ahead and move this back a little bit. This is gonna have a little bit of a head on it. Um, but we are gonna tie in um, a soft tackle. So for the soft, soft tackle, I'm just going back to a hen um, tackle, um, just like we used for the little wings back here, except I'm using a gray one. I've already pulled a nice gray feather off of here, maybe a gray done. So usually when I'm doing a, a soft tackle like this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab hold of the tip of the feather and then I'm gonna stroke fibers backwards like that. Um, that tip is gonna be my tie-in point. And we're really only going to take like one wrap of this soft hackle or this wet hackle around here. So once I've got that in place there, um, it's not gonna go anywhere. I'm gonna sneak in underneath where this is tied in and we're gonna go ahead and clip it off at the stem. Turn my vise back the right way around. Take another couple wraps here. Now with this, again, I'm gonna wet my fingers because um, I wanna kind of stroke these fibers backwards a little bit, but literally we're just going to take one, one turn around here. Just about like that. Um, so really just a hint of that soft tackle here. And I'm just, Securing the stem in place with a couple of thread wraps over the top of it. I'll take a thread wrap over the side closest to the eye of the hook as well, just to lock it into place before I cut the stem off. So now I'll go ahead and come in and come in gently with my scissors here, hopefully, and cut this off right close. Now once I have that um, done, you can see it's kind of gangly looking. I'm going to stroke those fibers backwards um, as I start building a tiny little hint of a head here on this pattern. And by moving backwards and, and continuing to stroke these fibers backwards, I'll get them to lay a little bit better um, towards the back of the hook. I had a couple that are fighting me a little bit, but that's okay. Let's get our mylar here going around our two little wings. want to make sure that that's going right over the eye so I'm trying to be a little bit careful and intentional in what I'm doing so I'm just taking a couple of wraps over the top of that mylar then I'm going to take that mylar I'm going to pull it backwards I'm going to put a couple of wraps right behind the eye of the hook here then I can come in with my scissors and with this mylar if I can just make a tiny little uh, clip on the side of it It'll rip right off. So with that, we're just gonna kind of stroke everything back again, make sure it's all backwards. I'm gonna cover up that mylar with a couple of additional thread wraps here. And then we're just gonna, we're gonna grab our trusty whip finisher, my trusty whip finisher. that nice and tight. Turn my vise a little bit so I can get a, this thread. We're going to cut it off with the back end of our whip finisher. And there we are with our, our completed fly. Again, it's an adult midge pattern. Um, I'm just going to call it the great bright green midge. Uh, I, I will not fish this, but it was, it's so fun. It was fun to tie. It was fun to um, kind of take the challenge and, and try to tackle it. Um, I, I just love the colors on it. I love the little wings that it's got on it. Um, thank you, Davy McPhail, for tying this and letting me watch it and uh, letting me give this a shot. Um, so now it's up to you guys. Give it a shot.